Welcome to a video from TheJustLive.com. This video we're looking at the history of the legacy of the Korg M1 synthesizer, one of the most, one of the best selling synthesizers of all time. Released in 1988, it was a music workstation which made it stand out from uh, other synths at its time. Um, Many of its presets were used all over the place. You mechanised the choir sound from Queen, got the piano and organ sound used from house music all over the place in the late 80s, early 90s, and the M1 synthesizer was really the, 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 the sound of that era. The keyboard itself, the M1, 60, 61 note velocity and after such a sensitive keyboard, but what made it different was not only the sounds, which we'll come back to shortly, was the fact that it was multi timbral you could have eight different sounds, eight different patches on eight different channels uh, through MIDI channels. It had an eight track sequencer and it had 16 note polyphony and insert effects as well, dual insert effects, drum kits as well. So it made it a complete music workstation. So that's where it really stood out from something like the DX7 at the time, or the DX, even the later DX7s perhaps had splits on them like the DX7 too. This had eight channels on it that you could use on one keyboard. So you could have the one keyboard, you can split the sounds, you can use it as part of the sequences, it, you could produce complete tracks on this as well. The other element of it is the sample sounds. It's using uh, 4 meg of PCM, 4 meg doesn't sound very much, but at the time it was quite good. 4 meg of PCM samples, which gave you the chance to do real acoustic sounds, something that um, you couldn't do particularly well on other synths. And like, like FM synths, and it has a fairly familiar architecture if you're familiar with analog synthesis of oscillators, filters, envelopes, that kind of thing, which made it easier to program than a DX7. But of course, with it having the samples in there, a lot of people just use the samples, uh, the presets, and it's effectively one of the first romplers available. It was used by everybody in that era. Um, 808 State, Depeche Mode, The Cure, The Orb, KLF, Bomb the Bass, Gary Newman, Mike Field, Patrick Morantz, Pet Shop Boys, Vangelis, Cram Cranberries, and as I said, you've heard the house uh, piano and organ sounds all over the place. So it w that's why it became such a popular synth. I'm going to be demoing some of the sounds shortly, but just briefly look at the history of the M1. So it came out in 1988 for the original version. They released an uh, add-on kit, the EX uh, expansion pack, and I think there was a whole keyboard EX version of it as well, which doubled the sampling up to 8 meg of, uh, of RAM, or ROM, sample ROM. Um, it had two card slots, and there was 21 slots available. So the card slots added sounds and PCM samples as well. And you could also use the the cards for uh, RAMs to store your own samples and store sequences on as well. So, as well as the, the M1, in 1989, Korg released the T3, and the T3 was a sort of an expanded version of the M1, which added a 3.5 inch floppy drive, doubled the memory for the sequences and for the ROM as well. Later, Korg introduced the um, O1W 1991 which was a 16 track version of the, of the M1, 32 voices, improved voice engine and actually the, the story goes that the O1W um, was going to be called the M10 and so, some of the marketing saw the upside down so I thought oh that actually makes a good thing called it the O1W so the legacy of the M1 stretched all the way through to, the, to that series the O1W was replaced by the Trinity and then the Triton range but of course but what I've got here is the virtual version of the M1 from the Korg collection, originally called the Legacy Collection. This was originally launched back in 2004, the Virtual Instrument is a VST, and Korg have been updated it, and it's very good at reproducing those, those sounds, so it's got all the original sounds in there, plus all the expansion cards uh, and some improvements on editing as well. So I'm gonna be using that for the sound demos. Well, let's have a look at some of the the way that the sounds work. You've got combinations, which combis these are the eight combis you can use, which are individual patches. So you can have eight patches, and each patch or program is made up of a dual oscillator. So if we go into program mode now, here you can hear the universal sound. 
and that's made up of the choir sound and the low sound. Here we can actually listen to that sample. And here's the choir sample. And if we go here, we can listen to the low sample. Just without the, any of the effects on. You can hear how well how much the effects work on this. So that's the sample. It can, when it's combined with all the effects and the envelopes, it sounds pretty good. So I said we've got two. Um, we've got different sound modes. We can have a single oscillator, a dual oscillator, or drums. We can be mono, poly. We can. We've got the multi samples. And we can have a pitch envelope for each of the oscillators. We've got a filter section where we can have separate filter envelopes for each oscillator as well. We've got cutoff. There is resonance on this. I don't think the original M1 had the resonance. This is something of the virtual version. And we've got individual controls for velocity sensitive and keyboard tracking, that kind of thing. We've got um, modulation, pitch modulation using the LFO. All of these different waveforms and the same for the frequency you've got a separate modulator for for the frequency as well then we've got the amps envelopes which you've got the adsr like this um, and again you can modif modulate the amp envelope using lfo and then the element that i think really makes these sounds is the um, dual insert effects on there so each one of those eight in combi mode, each one of those eight can have a dual effect on there. So each program has one uh, dual effect. So if I turn them off. So that's it dry and I add the effects on. And you can you can see how or you can hear how that really uh, really makes a, a rich sound from it. And you can imagine back in 88 if you were listening to an M1 next to say a DX7 2 which was plugged you know, put your headphones directly into the keyboard the, the DX7 had no effects this has the effects and you can see why this was a, a seller the D50 did have the effects as well which is another reason why that sold well but it was a combination of all this that, that did it and of course I mentioned the, the, the multi samples as well that made the instrument very good for doing um, acoustic type sounds so here is an acoustic guitar patch, single oscillator on there. Nowadays we're used with sampling and romplers, so we took type tech for granted, but back then it was quite a, a new thing as well. So that meant it was good for your bread and butter sounds and for pads and synthesis as well. It's pretty good at some rich pad sounds. The virtual version adds this easy mode for doing some of the basic editing and uh, inserts and effects and, and as in resonance as well. So um, the virtual version does a good uh, good job for that. If we go back to the browser, you can see here all the original cards that were available uh, for the for the M1, and then the T1 cards. I mentioned the T1 earlier. All the T1 cards are in there as well. So the the virtual version gives you sort of the best of both worlds of the M1 and the, the T1 or the T3 as it's probably the most sold. I mentioned about the sequencer as well. It's got a 8-track sequencer uh, which can hold 10 songs, 100 patterns, 77,000 notes, 7,700 notes in there with quantizing and editing. And again, that's what made this great. It's a powerful uh, single, single device. So let's have a listen to a couple of lead sounds. Some keyboard sounds, we've got electric pianos.
So you can see it's got some nice sounds with it. Let's have, uh, we heard the organ sounds before, so let's go for something different. We'll listen to a few of the bell type sounds. There's some nice string sounds in here. Yeah, some nice string sounds in there. Um, we've got all the usual brass sections. Um, the sample type ones, and we've got some analog type ones in there. Loads of vocal sounds, as you've heard, uh, the, the ones used by Queen, and there, there's just tons of them. As you can see, because we've got, with this virtual one, we've got all the cards as well, there's a huge selection. We've got guitar sounds. use samples they sound okay some ones with the effects on sound fairly usually they sound like samples the digital poly sounds are actually quite usable and quite good which probably haven't quite dated the same as some of the samples. And then of course we've got uh, drum kits in there. So there was a standard drum kit, which did use, or does use the standard general MIDI layout. So you had the original kit, and then there were some additional ones on the other cards, like the house kit. sound effects as well. Some nice ambient sounds as well. So I had a really interesting sound set for the time. Like I said, some sounds are a bit dated, some sounds pretty fresh now. It depends on like anything how you use them. We have all the expansion cards in the um, the virtual version as well. If you've got a Korg Mobwave, I've got a selection of sounds available uh, for the Korg Mobwave based on the M1 sounds. So um, I've done them by ear, I've recreated them. The Mobwave has some of the original samples from the M1 in it, so I've used them those as well to make it uh, as faithful as possible. So the legacy continues. If you can still get the, uh, uh, the the sounds with the modern equipment, you can buy the uh, M1s uh, second hand, which uh, aren't overly expensive, maybe about four or five hundred pounds. But it's a great, it was a great synth, still has its uses today, especially on the virtual version, and you can find those samples all over the place. If you want to learn more about uh, some synths, we've got a ton of the videos on our YouTube channel. We've got videos about the Wave Station, the TX7, the DX7. I've got look, some Korg uh, Karma, that's uh, my Korg Karma, I've done a video on that and plenty of others. 
Also, don't forget to check out the free sounds available on the digitalized.com for the core mob wave and for the radius and some other and the DX7 as well. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.